listen to the uh, to the the uh, council perks. We already went through that. There was no more. Oh, Council Wong Tam, your name is there as for question to the previous speaker. Okay, Councillor Wong Tam. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Councillor Perks, your uh, your referral motion asked the Integrity Commissioner to investigate violations of the Code of Conduct. What are the Code of Conduct violations you're asking her to investigate? Well, the specific decision about what is and isn't a violation is up to the Integrity Commissioner. What my motion does is put the issues raised by Councillor Min and Wong and, frankly, the way it's worded, uh, related issues in front of the Integrity Commission to make that determination. I would point out that in the uh, preamble to the Code of Conduct, there are a number of general principles that are supposed to apply uh, for them. The third and fourth ones, I think, are the most pertinent here. Uh, paraphrasing the third principle, in the preamble is that uh, members of council have to conduct themselves both in their public and in their private lives to a standard that would bear uh, significant public scrutiny. The fourth one uh, uh, requires members of council to uphold all federal and provincial laws as well as all municipal bylaws. I think both of those uh, would be of assistance in the integrity commissioner when reviewing the mayor's recent conduct. So Mayor Ford has said that his private life is his private life and his public life is his public life. Uh, you're saying that before the Integrity Commissioner, you're asking her to um, evaluate both, how he and conducts himself both privately and publicly. One of public office comes with an awful lot of privileges, but it also comes with some unusual responsibilities. And one of them is that we have to conduct our private affairs in ways that would bear public scrutiny. That's quite clear in the preamble to the code of conduct that uh, we all have taken an oath to uphold. So the allegations of, of, of uh, crack cocaine drug use is one of the areas of investigation. The allegations of perhaps Mayor Ford making racist or homophobic remarks uh, has not been addressed today. It has There has been no apology forthcoming from the mayor on this particular issue. It, are you asking the Integrity Commissioner to investigate that matter as well? That was your last question. Thank you. I certainly hope the Integrity Commissioner does investigate that. The role of a public official, particularly of the mayor, is to make all Torontonians feel respected and, and part of the broader community and to feel that they're, they're represented here at City Council. Racist remarks, homophobic remarks, sexist remarks, remarks that marginalize members of our community can never be tolerated by a, by a public office holder and I think uh, constitute a violation of the code of conduct that governs us all. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pasternak, question to the previous speaker. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would, would you describe this as a, as a sad and unfortunate time in Toronto's political history? That and many other adjectives as well. Would you, would you concur that the longer this lasts, the more damaging it becomes to the city? I would, and that's why uh, in my written remarks that I've sent to constituents, I've made it very clear that I hope that the mayor of Toronto uh, consider the well-being of the city and the functioning of this government as he goes forward. So based on the fact that this is a sad and unfortunate chapter, and the longer this lasts, it becomes more damaging to the city, do you think it would be prudent uh, to have this drag out for, by my estimations, another four months and so we can debate it again next spring? Um, well, first of all, I've already accepted a suggestion from Councillor Davis to amend the motion so that it reads uh, the February uh, meeting of Council or as soon as possible in terms of the Integrity Commissioner's report. Um, but in addition, uh, Councillor, I think you and I both know that uh, the controversy surrounding the mayor's behavior is going to continue. That as long as he holds the mayor's chair, uh, that the public will be of unquiet mind and concerned about the functioning of this government. Right. It's okay. going to drag out Thank no you. matter what. Yeah. Uh, looking at the, the motion, uh, it, makes, it makes more of a political statement. Would you describe it as a, a motion of censure? Um, you're referring to Councillor Min and Wong's motion? That is motion? correct. The one you're deferring. 
Uh, no, actually, it's, it's not formally a, a motion of censure of this council. Uh, you don't think from the phraseology here that it's a statement by council as a motion of censure? No, it's in fact uh, not. There's a process by which this body censures members, and that's not what Councillor Min and Wong is doing. Well, it sure looks like a motion of censure to me. I'm, I'm wondering why we're sending a motion of censure to the Integrity Commissioner and having this drag out another four months. Well, first of all, I've already pointed out to you it's not four months, and secondly, I've pointed out to you that it's not a motion of censure, so I'm afraid I can't accept the premise of your question. Now, there are approximately 360,000 school-aged children in the city and another 187 thousand graduates do you think by not dealing it with it today that council does not have the uh, the strength the authority uh, to to make a decision to move the motion of censure if it so desires and do you think this creates a moral ambiguity because you're you're putting it off for another another several months councillor Pasternak I think you're conflating two things my decision to make sure we get the best advice on how to proceed and that we actually get the best tools on how to proceed should not be conflated with the mayor's behavior. Absolutely the mayor's behavior is disreputable and shocking to all Torontonians. Our decision to get the best advice about the very intricate and important questions about how our government and democracy functioned is absolutely the opposite to what you're suggesting. Okay, thank you. That was your last question. Uh, Councillor Mamlidi, question to the previous speaker. So, so the motion would reflect on uh, what the mayor's admitted to, uh, perhaps, and, and what the integrity sh uh, commissioner should investigate. Is it his behavior uh, that you're looking at? What what is it that you want her to look at? Is it uh, drug use? What is it? Specifically, it's it's uh, the members, the mayor's conduct. In what sense? In a whole variety of senses that, quite be, frankly, I couldn't, I couldn't articulate in the three minutes that I have to answer your questions. Would it be behavioral? Behavior would be one aspect of it, yes. So should we have asked the Integrity Commissioner to look at you when you wanted to Councilor get me out of the council chamber? Councillor Mamlidi. Uh, and, and no, no, hold on, hold on. Happening? No, no, Councillor Mamlidi asked questions uh, on the motion only, please. Yes. No, it's not. You're not. Please, just on the motion, clarification. What a conduct is. Would you agree? Mayor Ford, please. What it is. Please, no interruptions. I, I actually agree. I agree with the mayor. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, you do often uh, interrupt me during my speeches and questioning, and I'd, I'd appreciate a little flexibility like you give everybody else. I, I'd ask you this question because I actually agree with you in, in many respects, and I hope that after the integrity commissioner comes back if your motion goes through that she actually comes up with a plan uh, to ask all counselors to do drug testing on a regular basis yes and and would you would you yes. agree to that yes. move that, that motion would you agree move to that counselor that perks move that, that, motion. that this doesn't okay. end with the mayor yes. that yes. in fact everyone okay. okay. motion should have okay. your blood tested Councilor for drug Mom use Lady. yes Councilor yes move that Councilor Mom Lady. Councillor Mamalidi, please. Councillor Mamalidi, um, first of all, um, I'm against mandatory drug testing in the general principle of people in their workplaces. Hang on, I'm making a best effort to treat seriously a question that I think is frankly quite frivolous. Um, yes. Oh, okay, Councillor Mamalidi. Okay. Councillor Mamalidi. Okay. Mayor Ford, please, stop interrupting. Yes, you are interrupting. Please. Okay, hold on. I've just got everybody's time on hold for a minute. Okay, come on, everyone take a deep breath, please. Okay, Councillor Mamalidi, ask your questions. Would you agree that a part of the investigation and the recommendations that should come out of that would be that every one of us get get checked or blood tested randomly for drug use. Yes. No. You don't agree with that. No, I do not. <laughs> but but you 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 just you want the integrity commissioner to, to do what with the mayor then? Well, if you read Councillor Min and Wong's motion, there are a number of uh, a whole range of behaviors on the part of the mayor that he speaks to, 
And if you follow the media, and I know that you do, you, you know that... You don't want to be one of those behaviors? Councillor Mamaliti, I'm doing my very best to treat you seriously here. But so am I. <laughs> there are a whole range of behaviors which have brought this government into disrepute. I think it's important and, in fact, critical for the functioning of this government that the behaviors of the mayor, which is actually what is in front of us today, be investigated to see whether or not it constitutes a violation of the code of conduct, one, and two, that the integrity commissioner use her authority to make a recommendation on okay. what an appropriate, okay. I, hang I on, I'm it. not finished, what an appropriate penalty for I that. I get it. Well, I'm very the glad, and we've made some I progress. You, the, the last, last question. question. The last question I have for you is, I get what you're doing, and in fact, I agree with you, okay? And I agree that with that comes change. And I think that many of you are looking at that through your motion. That change could mean random drug testing oh, for counselors. Councillor Mamaliti, that Would you agree, Councillor Perks, that that should be the case for you and everyone else? And okay. Okay. And I'd like an answer to the last question. Councillor Mam will lead each other, and that's not happening. Like Councillor Mam will lead, you're not going to get an answer. Councillor Carroll, question to Councillor Perks. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm wondering if I could uh, ask for <coughs> clarification. We're, we're looking at a change in the dates now. But I, I think the mover of the referral motion understands people have some unease because they want to make a statement today. If there were a way to make the, the statement that uh, is contained in Councillor Min and Wong's motion, but get advice at some point from the Integrity Commissioner as well, could you support that change in what we're doing today? Um. Councillor Carroll, first of all, uh, a number of members of Council, 29 or 30 of them, did make a statement at the beginning of the meeting. I was not one of them. Um, so councillors have had that opportunity. Further, um, I think virtually every member of this Council has made some kind of statement either through the press or through their websites or in, in emails to constituents. I think we've all had an opportunity to express our shock, our horror, and our deep concern for the functioning of this government. Um, the problem we have, in my view, is when we're asked to consider the conduct of a member of this council, we take on a, a quasi-judicial role. The, one of the reasons that I haven't signed a statement or a letter or tried to come to some resolution at today's meeting is I don't want to do anything prejudicial to my ability to evaluate the findings of the Integrity Commissioner. We have to step up and take this much, much more seriously than we would a regular bylaw. But you did indicate, if I could get you to clarify your remarks, you did indicate in your remarks that what you wanted to do was something that all of Council felt they could collaborate on and feel, supporting, feel supportive of. Uh, and so we hear support for both these actions. If we could combine the two, and get both that judicial opinion you're looking for, but make the stand that's been described to us earlier. If we could do both, would you be happier? Two things. The first thing is, uh, if you're considering uh, a process for evaluating conduct, you don't first judge the conduct. Second thing is, the rules, the rules that govern how we do our business here say that if you refer a matter to either a committee or a, a, an official, of the City Council, you cannot simultaneously take other action. It's either or. Well, your collaborative uh, comments and and uh, referring uh, uh, with with Centre Table have, have made it possible to do both. I, I wonder if you'd be able to welcome that action. I honestly, I, I have no idea at this point what act you're talking about. Put so, me on the list to speak, Madam so, Speaker. Yes, so maybe Councillor Carroll, when it's your turn to speak, you could now <clears throat> make an amendment. Okay, so that's it for the questions to previous speaker. Now we'll go to speakers for the referral. Councillor Men and Wong, you have two minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would urge members of Council not to support the referral. Um, I stand to rise and say there's more. Documents are being released today 
and that there's more damaging, disturbing, shocking information that will be another body blow to the reputation of this city. And we have to try today to rise above that, and that's why I say we have to support the motion in front of you. Uh, the, the petition that was presented were, was individual councillors speaking. This is council as a whole speaking. And there will be a motion moved today, an amendment to my motion, if Councillor Perks's motion fails, to, a con to build in Councillor Perks's intent to report back. I quite frankly believe that we have to make a statement today that enough is enough, we're not going to tolerate this, and we have to make a statement to the world who is watching today that this is wrong and we're not going to take it. Okay. Um, Councillor, please, no applause. Thank you. Councillor Carroll, two minutes on the referral. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we've, we have worked at times throughout this uh, term of office and really throughout this government uh, uh, since amalgamation in factions. And so it's difficult when we have to sort of step outside of the comfort zone of our faction and work together. But we've done it time and time and again when it is crucial to the future of the city, when it is crucial to going forward, which is the thing that we all have said so many times in the last couple of weeks. And so I truly believe that today we have to find a way to leave this council chamber as one and as having made the statement that so many of our residents are looking for. I've been counting them in my office. I'm a suburban councillor. Nine to one, people are asking us to make a statement, take decisive action, and not condone the behaviors that are what we are talking about today. Nine to one. In a ward where the subject we are talking about, Mayor Ford, uh, had a margin of victory over the 50% margin. But nine to one, the contacts are saying this is unacceptable. We need to make that statement today. And there is more information coming forward which will make them feel more hurt, more betrayed. But I do seek the Council of Integrity Commissioner whenever we are in a jam like this. As much as I need to make that statement today, I too want her opinion. But I think it's possible to do both. And I think if we truly want to look collaborative, we need to contain it in one action. It's why when we go back to the debate on the main motion, I'll be adding to Councillor Min and Wong's motion a six that simply says we also want to report from the Integrity Commissioner on the concerns raised in 1 through 5. Because we have to leave this council chamber as one, having made the statement that we do not condone what we saw in the ITO documents in any way, shape, or form, whether it was during the workday, as so often it was, or on free time, it is conduct unbecoming. And secondly, that we know there is more coming, and so we seek the counsel of our integrity commissioner. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here, I didn't look at the time. Okay. Um, Councillor Vaughn, two minutes on the referral. I'll be supporting the referral. I think that it's extraordinarily important in a time of crisis when, when sensibilities have been shocked and when, when clearly... Uh, you run out of words and adjectives to describe the disappointments. Uh, perhaps the chief summed it up best when he said he was disappointed. We all are. But at, at times like this, these are the times that you actually rely and, and go back to ground principles and rely on the rules and use the, 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 the pre-established measures uh, to respond, to, 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 to invent new process and to create new sanctions in response to the particulars of a, of a scenario uh, that is not a process and that is not a practice that, that, that I subscribe to. I, 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 I remember sailing with my father in a storm out on Lake Ontario, panicked, wondering what to do next as a little child. And my father said, do what I've taught you to do. Do what the rules of the boat are. You sail the boat or the boat sails you. And, 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 and that clarity in a, in a moment of storm and in one of real fear <laughs> is what got us back to shore. And I think that the course of action that Councillor Perks has proposed is one that gets us back to the rules that govern this council, rules that we have collectively agreed to, 
well ahead of the crisis being in front of us, well ahead of the evidence that is as disappointing and as disturbing and as disgraceful as it may be. It is, it is not up for us to make that assessment. It is not up to us to, 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 to divine the punishment. It is up to us to go back to the, the, the officers of this council that provide us with that insight, that have the investigative powers be precise and consistent with the letter of the law and give us guidance on how to respond collectively. I don't think there is anyone amongst us who hasn't in some way, shape or form, to quote the mayor, criticized what is clearly, clearly deplorable behavior. But, but for us to, 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 to act on that uh, in advance of reasoning, in advance of, of, of giving a clear understanding of what are our options, and, and, and to desert and, and to abandon the, the rules and regulations we put in place that, that foresaw most hey, of this. Hey, uh, Bond, so you're well over two minutes. Councillor Pasternak. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I urge you strongly not to uh, support the referral motion. This is not what the citizens of Toronto are looking for. This is not a time to stretch this out another four months. This is a time to vote on what's before us, send a strong message of Council's views, Council's opinions. I see it as a motion of censure and that's what, how it should be approached. I think that by putting this off further for months and weeks to come will create irreparable damage uh, for our city. It will send a bad signal that we haven't got the leadership in this council, that we haven't got the ability to make a decision now, that we're shuffling this off to an unelected bureaucratic who will be at the end of her term as the City of Toronto's Integrity Commissioner. I think this would be a fatal mistake to try and bring this back and it sends a bad signal. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you've got 360,000 school-aged children in this city, and you've got another 187,000 undergraduates. And they are watching us, not all of them, but maybe their parents, maybe their friends, maybe their relatives. And they will be enormously disappointed, enormously frustrated, that we do not have the moral authority and the gravitas here in this chamber to make a decision here today on the motion that's before us. And I strongly urge you to defeat referral, deal with what's before us and send a strong motion, send a strong message of censure uh, from this council so that all of Toronto and the world can watch. Thank you. Councillor Wong Tam, two minutes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I will be asking council members to support Councillor Perk's motion. The decision before council today is not whether or not we can ask Mayor Ford uh, to perform all the undertakings outlined in Councillor Min and Wong's motion. We can ask. We clearly have asked. Earlier today, I was asked to sign a letter. I signed that letter. Mayor Ford did not take a leave of absence, despite the letter was signed. A motion of censure has consequences. What we're asking the mayor to do is by urging him and requesting him to perform some undertaking that's outlined in Councillor Min and Wong's motion. That is not where we are going to get our results. And clearly, Council, uh, we want to see some results and we want to see some meaningful impact. You know, what's before us is a criminal investigation. I want to remind members of Council that this is not just about making sure that we pass a motion to take a statement. Each and every single one of us have probably made some public statements over the past two weeks. And those statements are on the public record. That was the public statement. What we're looking for is a much more effective tool of action. And that's very clear that that's what we're looking for and this council is grasping for just that. The criminal investigation and the surveillance of Mayor Ford in involves guns, violence, extortion, illicit drug use, trafficking, and possibly murder. I don't know. What I do know is that what we're going to get out of Councilor Minna Wong's motion is not going to be the apology. It will not be cooperation of the mayor with the police investigation. It will not be an apology for the mayor's use of city le uh, legal uh, letterhead uh, for uh, uh, scurrying favors for a friend who is an alleged drug dealer. None of those things will be obtained through that motion, which is why I think it is best put before the integrity commissioner. Councillor Stintz on the referral. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I would like to stand up in support of the referral motion. And I, I caution my colleagues. 
in the view that if we, that our only course of action is to approve Councillor Min Minwong's motion as a way of making a statement against the mayor's behaviour. There's no question that the residents of this city are opposed to the mayor's behaviour. I am, you are, we are. Because of the mayor's behaviour, I'm explaining to my nine-year-old what crack cocaine is. Because of my mayor, my mayor, I'm explaining that it's not okay to lie and only apologize when you got caught. I don't like to have to do that. Nobody does. But the reality is we're not here as citizens. We're here as elected officials. And the reality is if we approve Councillor Min and Wong's motion, as noble as it is, we actually haven't done anything. Because I don't want to hear the mayor apologize again because it's meaningless. I don't want to tell the mayor to take a leave because he's already said he's not. I actually want the Integrity Commissioner to tell us what the appropriate sanction is so that we can hold our mayor accountable because that's the mayor that he said he wanted to be. He will not be held accountable to Councillor Min and Wong's motion. He will be held accountable to this chamber and to the Integrity Commissioner. So I caution my colleagues, while we all want to make a statement about behaviour that we don't support, we need to do it in a way that has meaning, lasting meaning. And there's been, this is not a motion of censure that's been brought before us by Councillor Min and Wong's motion. It is a toothless motion. And if we want to do something as a council, then we hold our mayor accountable to the integrity commissioner and to the code of conduct that he has not adhered to. So I ask my colleagues, please support Councillor Perks's motion. Please make a statement that we want to hold this mayor accountable, not just to the city, but to this chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Councillor Mamalidi. I, I will be supporting uh, Councillor Perks's motion. And I'll be doing it because I, too, believe that that's the appropriate mechanism to, to be plan. dealing with any concern that councillors have with respect to each other. And uh, in any other form uh, is, I think, uh, not only out of order, but I think inappropriate. And I spoke to that when I spoke to this issue uh, this morning. I would say to you, however, that when this investigation does come back from the Integrity Commissioner, I will be asking for us to look at uh, random uh, drug tests of each of us. And I do that because, on one hand, many of you stand up and you want to criticize the behavior of the mayor, of which, he's, of which he has said uh, he's been under the influence a number of times, of which he said he, he has tried illicit drugs. Uh, we all heard that. There are some in the chamber that I believe, and I truly believe, have done the same things. But yet you want to stand up and you, and you want to criticize the mayor. Uh, and I say to you that if the behavior of the mayor is of concern when he's on a substance kick, then I say to you it should be for you as well. And if you're willing to lash out at the mayor in a public forum like this, then you should do a blood test yourself. And if you find to be under the influence, you deserve the same thing. And I say to you that because I truly believe it. I think that when you are under the influence of something, it makes you act a different way. I could swear to the holy God that Councillor Perks was under some kind of influence when he attacked me up there. And I say to you... Uh, Councillor, okay, Councillor Mamlady, times. I'll never forget that day. Count. I'll never forget that day. Councillor Mamaliti, please. An argument I wish to bring up based, on, based on, the, on the arguments that everybody's bringing forward. It changes and it alters your mood. Councillor Mamaliti, please. Your time is up. Oh, you didn't want to hear some few things I had to say. I get that. Councillor Layton to speak. Thank you, thank you very much, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Speaker. I, Councillor Perk's referral motion takes the strongest and most appropriate course of action in response to the Mayor's actions and admissions. Anything else is just politely asking instead of getting proper sanctions. Just because it's done quickly doesn't make it the strongest or best course of action. I certainly would never, will never be mistaken for someone who supports Mayor Ford's agenda 
or defense's policies. But no matter how much I agree, I disagree with the mayor's policies, and I'm, no matter how disappointed I am about the embarrassment and damage that has been done to our city and its reputation, we have institutions in our democracy to deal with such violations. And we need to stand firm in support of those institutions. One of these democratic bodies is the Integrity Commissioner. And one of the duties of the Integrity Commissioner is to conduct inquiries into whether a member of council is in contravention of our code of conduct. The code of conduct outlines, as Councillor Perch mentioned, that members of conduct are expected to perform their duties in an office, in office and arrange for their private affairs in a manner that promotes public confidence and will bear close public scrutiny. Members are also meant to serve the public interest by upholding both the letter and spirit of the laws. Do I believe the mayor has failed to represent the city of Toronto? Yes. Do I believe that he has, in his public and private affairs, as outlined in our code of conduct, failed to act in a manner that promotes public confidence? Yes. This has been both an embarrassment and a disappointment to our city. But while I personally believe that the mayor has failed us, and despite my sympathies for what he might be going through, it's not my official role as a councillor to determine the appropriate consequences. And while I personally believe he's broken the code of conduct, I am not the person to be the judge. We have an independent, neutral, and third party to be the judge of the code of conduct, and our conduct is members of council, council and that's our integrity commissioner. Thank you. Councillor Davis, two minutes. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, this has been a very difficult um, few weeks, and the deliberations around how to respond as a council has also been very difficult for many of us. Uh, I think as well for the first time we have all been speaking to each other across the political divide, if you want to characterize it that way, uh, to take the best and most appropriate action in the best interest of our city, because that is our responsibility. It is not to express our personal views about how repugnant behavior is or to express our personal views about uh, whether or not an apology was a real apology and it ought to be an apology in this manner. Um, our responsibility as a council representing the interests of this corporation is to follow the regulatory framework that we operate in. And that regulatory framework, when it comes to conduct of members, is the code of conduct. And we have an integrity commissioner for this very purpose. The code of conduct that we are obligated to uphold says very clearly that the improving the quality of public administration and governance can be achieved by encouraging high standards of conduct on the part of all government officials. In particular, the public is entitled to expect the highest standards of conduct from the members that elects to local government. In turn, adherence to these standards will protect and maintain the City of Toronto's reputation and integrity. Thank you. And the only way to do that Thank is you, to Councilor seek Davis. and take the advice of our... Thank you. Um, Councilor Ainsley, two minutes. Thank you. Through you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm not going to be supporting the referral motion. I, I understand the intent of it. I appreciate the intent of it. But I think I, I like everybody else in this chamber, um, this is starting to consume us. I go, to every, I go to every community association, they want to know what's happening with the mayor and city hall, what we're doing about it. You can't even open up a newspaper, any part of the newspaper. Yesterday I opened up the business section of one of the newspapers to look for something and got a column about our mayor. I think that the citizens out there, they want us to do something. They want us to take some type of leadership. I think referring, saying that we're referring this to the integrity commissioner for report if we advance it to February. Um, I think a lot of people are going to see it as a lack of leadership. That, you know, we're going to get into a whole explanation of what the integrity commissioner does, why we had a motion, whether or not everybody agrees with it. I think we need to take some type of action today. And I think sending it off to the integrity commissioner is just going to make it harder for us to go out and explain to the residents of Toronto 
what we're trying to achieve, we're expected to take some type of leadership role. I think sending it off to the integrity commissioner doesn't achieve that. I understand Councillor Carroll has an amendment to Councillor Min and Wong's motion. I think that's the more appropriate course of action for us to be taking here today. And I would ask everybody to support the amended motion. Thank you. But uh, Councillor Ainsley, the amended motion is not before us right now. Right. No, but you haven't presented it. So I just pointed out to Councillor Ainsley, what's before us now is the referral. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Mahevic. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm, I've been tossing and turning on whether to refer it or not, and I'm uh, now convinced that the, that the right course of action is to refer it to the Integrity Commissioner, and I do so for the following uh, reasons. One is um, we are not acting as legislators in, right now on this debate. We're actually acting as adjudicators uh, on a matter of, uh, of adherence to the Code of Conduct. That's a different function. When we act as legislators, we sometimes do so without staff advice. Sometimes we do so as a function of pure politics. Uh, sometimes we do it in conjunction with the best thinking of one another. Sometimes like, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. But when it comes to a code of conduct issue, when it comes to behavioral, a behavior issue, you want the integrity commissioner to have your back on it. Um, I think when we're acting as, a, as adjudicators, there is a different standard and it's a higher standard. Now, you know, in this, if we don't do this, if we don't refer to the integrity commissioner, get the report back, pay close attention to the advice that we're given, and then make a determination as to the appropriate course of action, then in another council, you can imagine under different circumstances, a different mayor, perhaps for more narrow political reasons, would we would as council say, well, we did the same thing to Mayor Ford, now we're going to do it to Mayor X. And last time we didn't go to the integrity commissioner, we're not going to the integrity commissioner now. You, we would open ourselves up to doors that I think later on, even if it's falsely done, would leave us in a very bad position. However, so that's why I'm supporting the, the, refer, the, the referral motion. The referral motion should not in any way be a sign that we're condoning, supporting, excusing the behavior of the mayor. That's why most of us, two-thirds of us, signed that letter in the morning that was presented by Councillor Robinson. That's, that was a good forum to say this is where we stand as, a, as members of council. But when we're acting in our role as adjudicators, we have to do it by the book. And I think by the book in this particular case is uh, supporting the uh, motion to refer. I think that's the wise course of action. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Mahavik, your time's up. Sorry. Councilor Aljamari. Thank you very briefly, uh, Speaker. Uh, I just wanted to make one point. I, too, will be supporting uh, the referral to the integrity commissioner. I think it's the wisest thing to do. But, um, and, and I don't know whether you'll be able to help me on this or not, but I did want to make a submission. And that is that within her purview, the integrity commissioner has the ability to report on, um, as, as part of her overall reporting, the ability to recommend a suspension of remuneration. So I would submit that the issue has now become a matter of uh, conflict of interest. It's a direct pecuniary interest for the mayor because she can be reporting on his suspension of salary. Thank you. Councillor Cho. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm rising to say I will support Councillor Goldbrook's uh, referral motion to Interior Commissioner. Uh, before I say why, uh, I'm doing that for our Mayor, Mayor Ralph Ford. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to say thank you very, very, very much, the police chief, chief player. If the chief player did not secure the tape, I wonder whether our mayor will say, I, I smoke cocaine or crack cocaine. I'm supporting that motion, referral motion, because if a 
our mayor, I like our mayor, by the way, uh, uh, very down to earth, uh, uh, everyday kind of guy. I like him, but uh, if he said, you know, I have a problem, I will take a leave of absence. And I will take the as a professional help, some treatment. I'm not going to support that motion. But it's not the case. I'm, I'm supporting this motion. So hopefully with the added uh, report from Integrity Commissioner, uh, our mayor will say, yes, finally, finally. I have nothing to hide. I'm going to cooperate with the police about the investigation. We have to fight against the illegal drug trafficking rather than hanging around with the drug trafficker. If he said that, I will support or not support the reporter. But it's not the case. You know, making one statement, so be it. I don't think so. We have an integrity commissioner to find out this kind of thing. Why we disregard the service when it's available? We have to use our taxpayers money more efficiently. I'm doing this especially for our mayor. If mayor takes time off, get to treatment and come back, you have a 10 times a better chance to get reelected. But you don't have that uh, stone Thank thing. you, Councillor Cho. Your time is up. Councillor Peruzza. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'm not going to support the, uh, the deferral, Speaker, because I, I the referral to the Integrity Commissioner, because I believe that this sad, sad spectacle has to come to an end. I believe it. Those of you, those of us, who claim to love Toronto best, just want this to keep going and going and going. If you really love Toronto best, Bring it to some closure. The mayor has admitted he's breached the code. He said it today. I heard him say it. Everybody here there isn't one single person in this room or watching us believes that he hasn't breached the code. So refer it off to the integrity commissioner, wait for a report two, three, four months hence, and the only thing you can do is talk about whether you're going to dock him some pay. That's really what What this is about. So claim to love Toronto best and then figure out where the pearl of wisdom is. and I think many of us do. Some are in support of the mayor, some are opposed to the mayor, and some are in wonderment. And I asked my questions earlier because I really wanted to know if there was a direction that the mayor was going forward with and he could tell me and all of council how we're going to work out of this. But I don't agree with my colleague, Councillor Peru, so that we could end this today. And what I do believe is that there should be some fairness and some response because people ask me what's right and what's wrong, what's public, what's private. I don't I don't agree with Councillor Menawong's motion because those questions have been asked and the statements there really don't make a lot of sense. You can make a compassionate discussion about it, but it's not real. It's 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 not the issues. They've all been answered. I think the real answer is allowing the integrity commissioner to look at this item to try and decide the difference between what's public and what's private because quite definitely 
the mayor's private life is part that's been out in the public purview, and that's not right. Because if many of our private life came out in the public, we'd maybe have areas of it that we really didn't want people to know how you dance, how you act in other places. And if you go to a, a, a game and you have a drink, you don't want people to be watching you. But I, I think referring it over there allows for an opportunity to get those answers out in a, in a neutral form where the Integrity Commission can look at it and give you that response. And I don't believe in voting on Councillor Menon Wong's motion or a small amendment that would say have the Integrity Commissioner do it and this. So I'll be supporting the referral to the Integrity Commissioner. Thank you. Councillor Leon. Madam Speaker, a month ago I was a new member here. And when I came, I saw Council strong and, and behind everything. And that's my vision of Toronto Council. A council that can stand together and make decisions and work around a problem. I have a problem with the deferral, although I must admit that when uh, Councillor Perk spoke this morning, I was deeply moved by his words of kindness and address to the mayor. He spoke from his heart, and he spoke well, and he spoke like all of us were concerned. When Councillor Mammoliti spoke, he spoke from his heart, and he spoke as a very close friend of the mayor. I watched the people here today, Madam Speaker, and they're all here looking for us to give them an answer today. Now we're between Councillor Min and Wong's motion that I saw develop about a week ago, and we're behind Councillor Perk's motion to refer it to the Integrity Commissioner. My problem is, if it goes to the Integrity Commissioner, we're going to wait till February. And I don't want to wait that long for all the people that came today to get an answer from this great council. So I'm hopeful that we can find a way maybe to take what Councillor Perks has said and Councillor Min and Wong has put forward and blend it together and get a reply here sooner. I don't think we need to come here any more than we have to to debate this issue. I think we should put a firm, solid resolve behind it today to get the answers back for not only this great council, but also to, our, to the mayor, his worship. He deserves to know how we're thinking and how we feel as a group. And that has to be a strong, unified decision. Thank you very much. Okay, um just so members are aware that uh, Councillor uh, Perks's motion has been revised, okay, from the original motion. So his, the, the, it's been revised to as soon as possible. Yeah. No, I just want members of council to know that because I don't know if you, you got a copy on your desk. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Cole. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, one thing that's become painfully obvious through this debate on a referral or not is that um, as a body we're extremely limited to taking any action in a, an unprecedented situation like this. I think that's important to remind the members of the public and everyone who's watching these proceedings. We have very little to no listening or watching that uh, the, the, there is no silver bullet here there is no easy uh, tool or option that we have at our disposal we are limited uh, people have tried to take some action uh, because their their residents and their voters and their taxpayers are demanding that we take action and so we work with what we have so So I suggest that there's a, a solution that will be before, before us momentarily 
and that you uh, do not vote to refer this to the integrity commissioner as uh, outlined in Councillor Perks' motion. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Cole. Uh, Councillor DiGiorgio on the referral. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I also uh, rise in opposition to the referral for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't see why it has to be a council resolution to go to the Integrity Commissioner and to ask for comments about the conduct of the mayor. It should have happened a long time ago if people were concerned about violation of code of conduct. Any single person or anyone in the public could have brought this to the attention of the Integrity Commissioner. Secondly, what I think is incumbent on Council is to determine how they will proceed going forward. If we refer this off for two or three months, we are basically condoning the okay. status quo. Just, just one sec, Councillor DiGiorgio. Councillor Fragadakis, Councillor Mamaliti, please. Yeah, it's, you're way too loud. Well, what I'm talking about okay. is how Council will... Okay, hold on, hold on. Councillor DiGiorgio, I'll put your time on hold. Okay, please, Councillor Mamaliti, please. Tell me. Okay, Councillor DiGiorgio. The point I'm trying to make is that the responsibility of Council, where it finds itself in a set of circumstances where, for whatever reason, the leadership of the Council is not as strong as people would like, Council has to deal with that. Council has the tools to deal with that. All they have to do is utilize the tools that they have at their disposal. And that can run simultaneous to getting anybody anything from the, the Integrity Commissioner with respect to whether a code of contact has been violated. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Matlow, two minutes. I urge you to support Councillor Minnewong's motion along with Councillor Carroll's amendment not to support deferral. The question uh, that I believe we all need to consider is are we waiting for any more outcomes or any more information to take a position today to demand accountability and honesty and to help us move forward and focus on good governance? Or do we have substantive information already today to make that decision? I believe everything we know to be true already causes more than a cause for concern, but it's necessary to take action. Okay, thank you. That's it for the speakers on the referral. So now we'll vote on uh, the referral by Councillor Perks, the revised motion that uh, has been circulated. Recorded vote. Councillor Crisanti, please, and Councillor Palazzio. Councillor Fletcher, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. Councillor Palazzio, please. Councillor Fletcher and Councillor Crisanti, could we have your vote, please? The referral motion does not carry. The vote is 19 to 25. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Well, no. Councillor, Councillor Carroll. Councillor Carroll. Madam Speaker, can I have a can I have a revote on that, Madam Speaker? Well, we. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm actually asking the speaker a question. Mayor Ford, please, please. If you want, okay, Councillor Thompson, if you want to change your vote because you made an, hold, hold on, you need to move a motion. A member 
that voted the opposite to move that we reopen it. So is there a member that would like to re reopen it? You know what the rules are? <laughs> Councillor Thompson, you voted in favor. Yes, that's right. Right. Okay, Councillor DeBitt. Some, somebody else has to move it. They'll give us some names. Okay. Okay, Councillor De Bearmaker voted in the negative. So, Councillor De Bearmaker, you're, mo you're moving to reopen? Yes. Okay. Okay, recorded vote. Councillor Thompson, you know that when that happens, you need a member of council to reopen it. You know what the rules are. Yes. Yeah. Councillor Shiner, please. <clears throat> this is to reopen the vote. The motion to reopen carries 42 to 2. Okay, on the motion. Not <laughs> on the motion. Okay, members of council, please listen. Because we're going to be voting on that motion now. So make sure you know what you're voting on. It's yes or no. Okay? Recorded vote on the referral. Just pay attention. Councillor Milton, please. The referral motion does not carry. The vote is 18 to 26. Okay. So, um, Councillor Carroll. Madam Speaker, I'll be moving an amendment to uh, uh, 41.25 that City Council requests the Integrity Commissioner to report back to City Council on the concerns raised in recommendations 1 through 5 in regard to the Councillor's Code of Conduct. Madam Speaker, I, I uh, am moving this motion out of a willingness to really underscore the degree to which all of Council has worked so hard since October 31st to try and come to some agreement on what to do in this crisis. And it is a crisis. Madam Speaker, we are at a point where internationally we are being discussed. The term Mayor Ford has become a verb. It's how you describe certain types of behavior. And sometimes the impact on a city of something of that, of that enormous nature takes a long time uh, for its impact to be felt. But once it takes hold, it can be felt for a very long period of time. Recovery will be needed economically, culturally, God help us, morally. We've got work to do in that regard. And it starts with making a statement that we don't condone these behaviors, that we urge some settling of them. We request some disclosure beyond uh, what we've heard on the radio, what we heard here in this chamber in short sentences, short bursts. But we aren't hearing, we aren't hearing the real disclosure about, about what troubles us most. And those concerns are contained in Councillor Min and Wong's motion. They represent the things that our residents are asking us to seek some explanation of. Absent of any explanation right out of the mayor's mouth, all of Torontonians, they're all thinking the worst. What else can they do? Absent of those explanations of this suspected criminality out of the mayor's mouth, if it wasn't some nefarious reason to be talking to the same individual 359 times in 44 days, tell us. Just tell us. But absent of those explanations, we have to make a statement and we have to make it now. I do want 
the expert opinion of an integrity commissioner. I want that, like all the rest of you, especially like Councillor Perks. Councillor Perks has upheld accountability offices, the creation of them, the very creation of them, as well as the use of them since their inception. I applaud him for it. I support him on this. I always have. But we're in an extraordinary set of circumstances right now. We need to make this statement right now. And the fact that it is coming from a loyal member of the executive is extremely symbolic. And that's why I applaud the fact that it is coming from a motion that, yes, is courageous because it comes from an executive member coming from Councillor Min and Wong. We need to support that courage. I think we need to join in it, but we need to use all the resources that we, that we are able to avail ourselves of. That includes the accountability office, but it means that we rely on one another to take a stand together. If we can't say today, if we can't say this very day, as even more information is coming to light, about even more mind-altering illegal substances, about sex trade and the like, if we can't take a stand today, if we can't stay, take a stand today, then I, I dare say we will hear a pox on all our houses. I am adding item number six to support the efforts of Councillor Min and Wong and to make this a statement that comes from Council as one I hope that you can support me. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Councillor Carroll. Okay, please, no applause. Um, Councillor Ainsley to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call a question. Oh. Councillor Ainsley, it's the mayor's key item, and the mayor would like to speak on it. Just want to. No, I, Councillor Thompson, let me finish rather than yell. I, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that we, but we're, what we're saying is that we all agreed that we would allow the mayor to speak last. So before, I know, before you vote on call the question, I just want to remind members of council that we agreed on that this morning. Okay, recorded vote. The question's been called. Councillor Fillion? Uh, just one moment, just one moment. Can we allow the mayor to speak and then take the vote. Is that possible? If it, so, I'll move. If members, if members of council, if members of council agree, so move. So move. I'll move. I'd like to move that. Okay. Well, we're in the middle of calling the question now. Well, so. no, but before we call the question, it's, if it's the will of council. Okay. So the best thing to do, if you want to do, uh, Council Phil, in suggesting because I. Called the, the question's been called. The only thing we can do right now is vote. So if you want to change that, vote no against calling the question, and then you can move that. Okay? Could I, I make an amendment? That no, you can't make an amendment to call the question. That's why I'm trying to explain to you. You have to vote no to call the question and to amend and ask the mayor to speak and then call the question. Okay? Okay, so we have the motion to call the question. Unless Councillor Mahevic, you're withdrawing it. No, Ma Ma Madam Zane's Speaker. Zane's He's the next speaker. So. Madam Speaker, I will yield the floor. Maybe the clerk can be thinking. Yield the floor to the mayor, and then if it comes back to me, I will move the same motion that Councillor Ainsley did. Either way, it's the same. No, no he, he, can't he do that. The question's been called. If, if the question's called now, and you vote. Yes. Members of Council, you have to vote on calling the question. Can... Recorded vote. You no, can't. I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote yes. Just you can't use move a motion and then with, withdraw it like that. Councillor Mamalidi, please. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Well,
The motion to call the question does not carry. The vote is 11 to 32. Okay, thank you. So, um, Councillor Leon, did, uh, okay. No, Councillor Mahavik has called the question. He's, oh, Councillor, I'm sorry, Councillor Ainsley called the question. Councillor Mahavik. Ma Madam sorry. Speaker, if it's procedurally appropriate, I would be happy to ye yield the floor to the mayor to allow him to speak. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mayor Ford. Well, oh. okay, either members of council take their name off so we can allow the mayor to speak, or if they wish. Councillor Shiner. Speaker, on a point of order, we don't have a motion to yield the floor. If the mayor is the last speaker, the mayor is the last speaker. That was his right. And the other members can take their name off the list and let's get on with it. Well, that's if what they're I'm not saying. taking the name off the list, then speak and the mayor will speak last. That's what I'm trying to explain to members of council. You have your names up there. So did you want to speak? Councillor Leon. Councillor Leon, to speak. I'm off. You're taking your... Councillor Palacio, did you want to speak? Yeah. Okay, take your name off. Okay, Mayor Ford, to speak. Okay. I, um, I don't want to move this motion, but I have to move this motion. Um, and no one wants to m move this motion. Um, I do. I but will. I'm not a rat. I don't want to. Okay, I, it's my please, fault. Move your motion so you before. At you city council, direct all members of council. <laughs> If I can't speak, I can't speak. Okay. Is that in order? Okay. What's wrong with it? Is that in order? Well, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, just a sec, just a sec. what's no, wrong with it? Order. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Uh, if I can't. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, just a sec. Yes, Councillor Fletcher, just let me. No, I know Mayor Ford. I'm going to rule on your motion. So once everyone is quiet, I'll rule on the mayor's motion. Okay, Mayor Ford, as I indicated when you mentioned to me you were going to move this motion, I informed you that the motion is out of order. Because, no, hold on. It's germane to this item, so it's not in order. But you're more than welcome, as I suggested, to bring that notice of motion through at the next council meeting. That would be in order. So at this point, your motion is out of order. Madam Speaker, I'm going to do that next meeting. All right. Thanks. Okay. Mayor Ford, now you can speak. Well, um, I, I have to challenge the Chair, Madam Speaker, with all due respect. Okay. Before I even speak. The Chair has been challenged. Recorded vote. To uphold the chair. Yes, to uphold the chair. Yes. What is it? To uphold no. The chair? Yes, to uphold. No. What are we voting on? Okay, just a sec. If everyone just please listen to me. Please, I know. Just, just quiet. Just for one minute, okay? I. Okay, Councillor Shiner, please take your seat. Councillor Shiner. Councillor Del Grande, please. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on before we take the vote. Councillor Leon is exactly We're not taking the vote yet. I know, but just hold on. Okay, we're just. Okay. Okay, members of council. Don't worry about. Yeah. I'm not worried about. Maybe you do. Okay. Please, members of council. I'm trying to explain because know nobody you. knows. Know Councilor Mamliti. Mayor Ford, please. I... Members of council have asked me what we were voting on. What we were voting on, Councilor Fletcher, because you asked the question, is that the mayor moved a motion. And I called the motion out of order. The mayor has challenged the chair. So right now we're voting on upholding 
the chair's ruling. That's what the vote is. So everybody understands that. Councillor Bardinetti, please. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Del Grande. And Councillor Parker. Thank you. No, no, hair. No, no, blood. I don't. Okay. The chair is upheld. 38 to 5. 38 to 5. Uh, as I suggest. Okay, come on, come on. As I suggested to the. As I suggested to the mayor that the mayor can introduce that motion, which would be in order at the next council meeting. Okay, Mayor Ford to speak. Never. Ever. John, um... Okay, I'll start your time over again. I, All right. I think I've said everything um, I really could say today. There's not much to add. Um, apologizing and, 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 and saying sorry, you can only say that so many times. There's nothing else to say, guys. I, I really uh, effed up, and that's it. That's all. I, I, I'm just the only thing that can prove, at least to clear me, and I'm not going to start pinpointing people because I think we all know stories about each other here, and I would, I, you know what? I, I'm, I was, I wasn't brought up that way. I'm not a rat, and. I think other people would. Okay, uh, okay. All right, please. Members so, council, you know what? Oh, Mayor Ford, just a sec. Members of Council, please, please respect each other. I've said that over and over again. Allow the Mayor to speak and stop disru disrupting. Please, I, I appreciate that. Okay, Mayor Ford. I, uh, again, I apologize. I was elected to come down here to straighten this mess out. I know I've done a great job at running the city, saving taxpayers money, and putting us on the right path. I'm going to continue doing that. I'm not going to miss a meeting. I've never missed a meeting. We're going to move on and get the budget through at one and three quarter percent tax increase, lowest in North America. I am so proud of the record that I have. I can't wait till the election. Obviously, the campaign started. And I'll be doing everything I've done for the last 13 years, returning calls, watching every dime, going to people's homes, and fighting for the little guy in the city. And if you want to carry this on, I can't stop you. I'm moving on. You guys can do what you want. I apologize again. I'm sorry. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. So, members of council... So we just have one amendment, correct? Amendment by Councillor Carroll. We can put that motion on the screen. Recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please, and Councillor DiGiorgio. Councillor Robinson, please. Councillor Cho. Yes, it's, it's on the screen. <clears throat> The amendment carries 35 to 6. Okay. On the item as amended, recorded vote. Mm -hmm. 
But we started the vote. Okay, there's been a request. Well, we voted on Councillor Carroll's. So there's been a request that we vote on each item separately. So number one, recorded vote. Councillor Shiner, please. And Councillor Perks. Councillor Leon, please. Part one carries thirty six to six. Part two, recorded vote. <laughs> Councillor Vaughan, you have to remain in your seat when we're voting. Councillor Palazzo, please. Councillor Part two carries thirty four to five. Part three. Recorded vote. <coughs> Councillor Mallow, please. Part three carries 36 to six. Part four, recorded vote. Councillor Fragadakis, please. Councillor Carroll, please. Part four carries 33 to nine. Part five, recorded vote. Councillor Mamalidi, please, and Councillor Vaughan, please. Councillor Carroll, please, and Councillor Davis. And Councillor DiGiorgio, please. Councillor Davis, please. Part five carries 37 to five. Okay, clause is amended, recorded vote. Oh, you voted on it, yeah. Okay, that's it for the item. No, there's no clauses amended. No. 
We already voted on it. That was the first vote. Which was the second item of the day? Oh, now we're going to smoking. So it would be the, um, if we could, uh, is it the Board of Health? Board of Health, page 5, HL 24.3. And Parks, Parks Committee, um, PE 23.3, we're dealing with those items to, uh, together. No, I'm sorry, uh, you can't, uh, we can't receive deputations from the public at council, only at committee. Now that's the procedure bylaw. Okay, um, Councillor Mahavik, do we have, do we want to take a five minute recess? Okay, let's take a five minute recess so uh, members of But that's up to him in terms of whether or not he wants to do that. It sounds like what's been released uh, is a continual kind of uh, behavioral problem that comes along with drug addiction. You said that the uh, mayor seems to have an addiction problem and it's uh, part of a long standing issue that we've had here. No, uh, I, I think that if we're, we're heading in the direction that we're heading in today, by clearly putting this uh, on the agenda, by making it a public issue, by going after the scolding that some people wanted to give the mayor today, uh, I think that all of us should be subject to that if we're taking drugs. Uh, and so uh, I know that I, I'm not. Uh, and so I'd be the first one to, uh, to do it uh, if, uh, if council agrees. Uh, but I'm curious to see whether or not other councillors are actually taking some kind of uh, drug, uh, be it uh, crack, be it uh, weed, be it uh, pills, be it whatever it is. Uh, if they really mean what they said today, then they'll conduct their own test on their own blood. Isn't it about more than that? The mayor misled the city for almost six months about that. Yes, and all of us are extremely disappointed in the mayor, including myself. Uh, there hasn't been anybody, I don't think, on council that's defended his strategies over the last three years than myself. I am more disappointed in the mayor than I think than uh, even some of his own family members are. Uh, because of, of the path that he took and he mis misled all of us. But that does not mean that we don't have to recognize that some people are sick and drug addiction is an illness. And we have to treat it as an illness. And that's the message I want to give out today, is that if you're addicted to drugs, your behavior goes uh, away. And I think that the mayor has shown signs of that. Uh, I hope he's on, on, on his way to recovery. He, he hasn't admitted it yet, so that tells me that he's not. Giorgio, addiction is a progressive disease.
What do you have to say about the new information from the ITL? Mayor Ford, do you have any information to share with us now before it comes out from the courts? Mayor Ford, you said you had nothing left to hide. Is that still true? Mayor Ford, are you going to come out and speak to us? Will you come out and speak to us? Mayor Ford, will you come out and speak to us? He said no. You didn't say one word. It's because there are too many reporters. <laughs> <laughs> What's good then? You didn't say anything. Is that Dennis Morris? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he was whispering in his ear, don't he? Well, it, it speaks to the bullying nature of the Ford brothers that there were a whole bunch of very young employees came in here with idealism about being in politics and working in the mayor's office has led to having to, to partake in and facilitate some outrageous forms of behavior at all hours of the day and night. So if we're feeling very bad for those young staff members. But right now we need to make it very clear to people 
That, while we heard rumors, confirmation means we must make this strong stand today. But what does what happens now? Uh, council has voted in this way, but there's nothing that council can force the mayor to do. Are you optimistic we'll see any change? I think that's why Councillor Minowong used the words urge. We don't have the power to order him out of office until charges are at least laid in, in, in some way or other, and we, we don't know what will happen uh, in the courts in the next few days. But urge was to remind the mayor that any time you have such a personal crisis that you are embarrassing the government you sit with, you step aside so as not to embarrass that government. And that statement was made by council today. We are urging, we are imploring, we are requesting the mayor to do the right thing. Do you think that things are going to change here? We saw a different tone on council. One councillor described it to me as uh, everyone felt like they were on pins and needles as that was continuing. Do you think that that's going to be the new tone here on city council? Well, pins and needles, but what we cannot have is the bullying behavior we saw in the first half of the day. Uh, council came in here trying very hard to act with more decorum than we've seen all through this term of office. The only two people in this room who really wanted to fight were Mayor Ford and Council Ford, and they were lunching across the room a couple of times to have that. We had to make a statement to make sure that they understand we won't accept that in the council chamber for the next 10 months. All right, Councillor Shelley Carroll joining us live on CP24. And uh, just to show you sort of the what's happening up here, there are a number of different scrums breaking off. There are so many members of the media here that uh, it's all broken off into different scrums. A member of council are coming up. There's another scrum happening just down the hallway there, as you can see. And I'm just going to let the control room know that my IFB hung up, so I'm not hearing uh, what's going on there. But you can just see the, the situation here. I don't know if we can go all the way down to uh, see who's speaking in this scrum, but there's no word if the mayor is going to be speaking. We've got eyes on him as well. He's still in council chambers and he's uh, walking around. I see his press secretary with him and it looks like he is leaving council chambers right now. Mayor Ford is leaving council chambers. It's Councillor Giorgio Mammolini who's speaking again. He spoke to the media a couple of times. I'm just going to sneak in here and sneak my microphone in so that we can uh, listen to what Councillor Mammolini has to say. Uh, all we can do is give advice and I've given him that advice. Uh, I know what that would mean. It would mean that it would be a, a reflection of his life. And 20 days later, he'd come back and recognize that perhaps he did have a problem. But that's up to him in terms of whether or not he wants to do that. It sounds like what's been released uh, is a continual kind of uh, behavioral problem that comes along with drug addiction. You said that the uh, mayor seems to have an addiction problem, and it's uh, part of a long standing uh, issue that we've had here. No I don't want that. Wouldn't that lead just to more muddy the waters and take the focus off of uh, no. what should be? No. Uh, I, I think that if we're, we're heading in the direction that we're heading in today, by clearly putting this uh, on the agenda, by making it a public issue, by going after the scolding that some people wanted to give the mayor today, uh, I think that all of us should be subject to that if we're taking drugs. Uh, and so uh, I know that I, I'm not, uh, and so I'd be the first one to, uh, to do it uh, if, uh, if council agrees. Uh, but I'm curious to see whether or not other councillors are actually taking some kind of uh, drug, uh, be it uh, crack, be it uh, weed, be it uh, pills, be it whatever it is. Uh, if they really mean what they said today, then they'll conduct their own test on their own blood. Isn't it about more than that? The mayor misled the city for almost six months about that. Yes, and all of us are extremely disappointed in the mayor including myself. Uh, there hasn't been anybody, I don't think, on council that's defended his strategies over the last three years than myself. I am more disappointed in the mayor than I think than uh, even some of his own family members are uh, because of, of the path that he took and he mis misled all of us. But that does not mean that we don't have to recognize that some people are sick and drug addiction is an illness and we have to treat it as an illness and that's the message i want to give out today is that if you're addicted to drugs your behavior goes uh, away and i think that the mayor has shown signs of that uh, i hope he's on, on on his way to recovery he, he hasn't admitted it yet so that tells me that he's not Giorgio, addiction is a progressive disease and it is but it is the kind of thing that uh, i mean anywhere you look in terms of any kind of recovery platform it's never dealt with alone and you were suggesting earlier that we should just let him go and deal with it on his own. I can't, I don't, I'm not familiar with any addiction platform. That no, you have to admit it. You know what I meant? That. But I mean, in terms of treatment, it's all, it's never done alone. No, you, you need, uh, you need counselors, you need, you need counselors, you need your family. 
family treatment is important as well when you talk about addiction. All of it has to encompass that. And the other thing that I, I say to you is it's, it's ironic that, you know, during the last election, the two lead candidates, uh, the mayor, Rob Ford, uh, who clearly has said he's taken drugs, and George Smitherman, who's, who's a recovering addict, were the two top people that were going to grab the job. Seems to me we would have been in the same predicament, perhaps, uh, if the other one won the candidate, candidacy. So, uh, you know, like, let's just take a step back and recognize what we're supposed to do when somebody's sick. Are we supposed to giving them, be giving them a public lynching? Would you do that to your own family members if they had an addiction problem? I don't think anybody would. I'm trying to just bring reason to this. I don't condone what he's done. I will never condone the behavior. He has put all of us in a particular predicament, but we've got a city to run, and let's move on with it, and let's recognize that he may have a problem, and ask him to step back, as we've done today, and get treatment. In my case, I'd like him to get treatment for it. To be disproven over the next few days, as the court documents uh, become digested by, by Torontonians, more questions will come. So the circus never ends. And that's why this is so hurtful to the Toronto brand, and our, our image is Toronto, is Toronto the good. Uh, by him not coming out clean, and by him not taking responsibility, and by him not taking a leave of absence, it is only hurting our city. Is it hurtful, Joe, Councillor, is it hurtful to see all the stuff that's been coming out? Of course, that is that the that they have to buy their moves. Is that the support to you? Absolutely, it is the support. We need an election to political office. All of us, we need to know that we have to have a higher standard of action and responsibility in the public. We are models for other citizens, for residents.